Welcome back. I hope you had a wonderful weekend, everybody. Well, tonight I've got a story from Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit that I opened up so that you could directly submit your stories to me so that I could narrate them. Uh, this one is pretty damn epic. Well, I think so anyway, and I hope you all agree. Well, without further ado, let me get on with it. Sit back and relax with your favorite drink, my friends, because it's time to listen. The ghastly creature looked sickly pale under the fluorescent lights of the Antarctic Research Station. Her features were gaunt, translucent bluish-gray flesh pulled tight over the sharp bones that made up her once beautiful visage. The vipers atop her head hung limp and passive around her face. Lelo was but a pathetic parody of the goddess she had once been. The only kindness this cold and barbaric organization had bestowed upon her was the inability to see her own wretched state. Her eyes were sewn shut, stitches stained crimson by the very tears of blood that slid down her icy flesh. They felt to her like rivers of fire rushing across a blanket of fresh December snow. Her blood was toxic to all who touched it, except for her. To her, it only brought the pain. This, however, was not the worst ache she felt. The worst torment by far was the guilt brought by the knowledge of the people she had killed when they had taken her from her icy cave. When they met her eyes, she saw their lives flash in their minds as their bodies calcified. She felt every bit of the physical agony they felt, as well as the despair of her own self-imposed hell. This was far worse than any physical affliction imaginable. She was forced to constantly relive every death she had ever caused. To see every family she had ever torn apart, and to feel their endless grief. She felt that she deserved the torture this top-secret military facility put her through. The pain of the scalpels, needles, and other implements of science was a mild distraction from the true and pure suffering she put herself through. What she didn't know was that her blood was being used as a weapon by the government. She was, in fact, being used to hurt even more people than she ever could using only her cursed eyes. If she knew the truth, she would die from a broken heart. Someone who knew the truth stood at the foot of the gurney she was strapped to. His name was Gregory Caleb Hart. Greg to his friends, and Dr. Hart to his co-workers. Gregory was a kind man. A kind man who would never hurt anyone without reason to. He had been told by his superiors that the Gorgon was a danger to the facility, that she had actively sought out and petrified their soldiers. The truth was that she had come quietly and passively upon her capture so as not to cause any more casualties. They had told her they would cure her, make her normal and give her a proper home. They lied to her face and she let them sew her eyes shut in order to prevent any more deaths. This was the truth that was kept from all but the one who had woven the lie. This individual was a young woman who felt age beyond her years. She had been the one to command the patrol that had discovered Lilo's cave. She had seen her soldiers turn to obsidian. She had lied to the monster that had murdered them. She had sewn the Gorgon's eyes shut. Her name was Drusilla, meaning strong one, and what she had done had required all of the strength she had. On some level, Commander Drusilla Ignis felt a sense of empathy for the girl who was that monster, but she could not let that sway her. 
She had to obey the orders of those who outranked her. She had to think of the greater good, as she allowed her scientists to torture a creature that was, on a basic level, just a young woman who felt age beyond her years. Gregory gazed at Lilo, feeling a deep sense of pity. He wanted to hold her hand, to tell her it would be all right and to make her feel loved. He knew not where this connection stemmed from, nor why he was beginning to doubt Commander Ignis's story. All he knew for sure was that he wanted more than anything to speak with the Gorgon. He silently wished she would say something, or give him a sign that she was alive. As if by some magical alignment of the stars, she briefly broke the surface in the sea of drugs that had pumped into her blood. Hello. A weak and agonized voice asked within his skull, taking him by surprise. Yes, he asked out loud, drawing the eyes of several scientists. He flushed with embarrassment and allowed himself to write it off as his mind playing tricks on him. That night, as Gregory slept, he heard the same voice in his dreams. Hello, Dr. Hart, it said. I hate to be so impatient, but when can I be normal? The voice carried the tone a child might use when asking for its mother. It sounded weak and afraid. This hit him like a punch to the gut. The innocent voice that now spoke in his mind could not belong to a monster like the one his commander had described. Could it? He did not know. Gregory spoke. Words sounding foreign upon his lips as they fell. What do you mean? He asked, confusion evident in his voice. The image of a snow cave slowly blossomed into existence. He saw Commander Ignis holding Lilo's head in her lap, drying her tears as she sewed shut her eyes. The commander whispered soft words of comfort that Gregory could hear clearly despite the howling wind outside. Don't worry, she soothed. It's not your fault. I can make you normal. Tears streaked the commander's face as she said these words. The statues of the fallen screamed their eternal death cries as snow filled their eyes and mouths. They would never be buried for fear of the public knowing of the military secrets. Their families would never know what became of them. Gregory knew what to do. Over the weeks that followed, Gregory began to formulate a plan to free the Gorgon. They spoke in his dreams every night. It broke his heart to tell her the truth but he needed to in order to convince her to escape with him. Lilo tried her best to hide her feelings from Gregory, but it was clear that she was falling in love. She felt such a strong connection to him that she wanted nothing more than to be with him. He was only the second person who had ever shown her anything but disdain. The first person had been a man by the name of Jason, but that had been many years prior. Jason had suffered the fate of all who gazed into the Gorgon's eyes. Gregory reminded her of Jason, so being with him was like a long-awaited reunion. Gregory's feelings for Lalo deepened as they planned their escape. Unbeknownst to Lalo, he too was falling in love, but this was a different sort of love. While Lilo's love was a bittersweet nostalgia, Greg felt the passionate adoration of a young man who had fallen in love for the first time. In his eyes, Lilo was a vision of perfection. Despite her monstrous appearance, in his eyes she was no less than a goddess. Their love blossomed like a phoenix from the ashes, burning brighter and brighter until each confessed their feelings to the other. 
For the second time in her life, Lilo truly felt at peace. But peace is never long lasted for a Gorgon. Finally, the night of their escape came, and Gregory took her from the lab. He brought her to her cave and cut the thread from her eyes. She, however, refused to open them. She knew all too well what gazing upon the face of her love would bring. She begged him to leave, telling him she didn't want to hurt him. He wept and begged her to let him stay. He said he would blind himself just to be by her side. But she refused. Jason had said the same. But the temptation to gaze upon the worlds within the eyes of the Gorgon had been too great. Humans were drawn to the knowledge she kept within her eyes. She knew that Gregory was too similar to Jason to be safe from her gaze. It broke her heart to let him go without even seeing his face. But she knew she couldn't look. They kissed goodbye, and the temptation became too great. Her eyes opened, and she saw that he was, in fact, Jason. He had been reincarnated as Gregory. He had made the same mistake as he had before. She openly wept upon seeing the torment in his eyes. He remembered. He remembered everything. The Gorgon's eyes made him remember. Gregory saw the reason why the Gorgon's eyes turned people to stone. He saw why the human race could not know what lay beyond their simple and primitive senses. He not only saw heard, smelt, tasted, and felt, he experienced an infinite number of indescribable scenes. He saw colors that weren't colors, but electromagnetic waves invisible to the human eye. He heard inaudible sounds, as well as the uncountable colors that now painted the world in an overwhelming cacophony of light and sound. Two things that were now indistinguishable from one another, as well as the other sensations that racked his feeble mind. Human instinct forced his body to commit violent suicide by calcification. Lilo held his hands as they turned to stone for the second time. She stared into his eyes until they too turned cold and dead. She cried and cried, not letting go of his numbingly frigid hands. When she did let go, it was to walk slowly out of the cave. She wandered into the bleak Antarctic night, wind whipping and lashing her flesh, freezing her tears. She walked to the edge of a frozen outcropping that towered apathetically over the raging sea. Waves as tall as skyscrapers bombarded the cyclopean cliffs. She paused to stare at the wrath of the sea, simultaneously admiring and fearing its might. She thought of her own power, of her own insignificance in the face of this cold and unfeeling storm. Without any further hesitation, she flung herself from the cliff. Her entire life flashed before her eyes as she fell to her demise. She saw even the things she had tried so hard to forget, like Jason's kind eyes. She crashed into the icy water, dying on contact, and ending her long, painful life.
So um, a, a nice take on a pretty old standard theme there. I really like that one. It really appealed to me. I uh, hope you liked it too. Well, if not, don't worry. There'll be another video along on Wednesday. <laughs> so join me again real soon. But for now, bye bye.